I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to do a video in response to a user request, and we're going to talk about how to add a new value or a new row into a combo box uh, that's open in regular form mode, so it's not in design mode. And uh, the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use a little bit of VBA and that's going to help us to, uh, to put a new value in there. So without further ado, let's get to our VBA uh, combo box. Okay, so many thanks for this request uh, from our uh, viewer who uh, wanted to know how to do this particular uh, exercise. And as you can see, what I've done here is I created a a couple of tables. One has a name lookup with John and Jack in it, and the other one just has, uh, it's just a table with uh, a field called some text and a name field, and of course an ID field. And, uh, <clears throat> and then what I did was I used the form wizard and I just created a, a table in tabular view uh, with a drop down in it um, that has John and Jack in the drop down. And as you can see, it has the three rows um, that were in the table. And each of these uh, uh, combo boxes has John and Jack. And uh, what we wanted to do was to create some way of adding um, a new value into our drop down list. And I should note that this is not the only way to, uh, to add a new value. There's actually many different ways that you can do it. Uh, this is just a simple way to uh, to show how uh, you can use some VBA in order to uh, to uh, add a new value. So, so if you look at the properties tab of our combo box, which I named CBO my combo, you can see that there's a row source, and in the row source there's a query, and all it is is it's just a query with the first name from the name lookup, and um, <clears throat> it asks you to, to if you want to save it every time you close that one so uh, you can save it if you want to um, and uh, so our row source there is uh, is good to go and it is selecting John and Jack just as we uh, described now if you don't see the property sheet for your uh, combo box uh, you can right click on your combo box and go to properties and it should pop up and you should see all of these tabs here. And what we're going to do is um, uh, we are eventually we're going to use uh, some properties in our combo. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, our design, <clears throat> our design ta uh, ribbon, and we're going to find uh, we're going to find the uh, text box um, control. And so. You can see there it is and you can just click on it and go somewhere in the form header because we're just gonna take one value we're not gonna put it on sort of every row of the display and uh, you can delete the label that is automatically created and you can see the name there is text 12 but we don't really like that so we're gonna go to the other tab and we'll change it to txt hidden value and now we know that um, this text box is text boxes for a hidden value. Then you can go to the format tab and you can find the visible uh, property and we're just going to set that visible property to no and then you'll you'll notice uh, after we save that and we go look at our our uh, form view uh, you'll see that that text box is uh, it's sort of hidden it's there in the form it's part of the form uh, but it's hidden and that's exactly what we want to see and then from there we can move ahead and take a look at doing some coding so click on your combo box in the design view and then we'll click on our event tab in the property sheet and we'll go down to the on double click uh, event and then click the ellipses and then choose code builder and that'll pop you right into the uh, double click event for for that uh, <clears throat> for the combo box and that's going to allow you to put some some uh, code in there 
that'll allow us to, uh, to add a new row into our combo box. Now check out my video on cascading combo boxes as there's a comment there that asked about how to do this and I gave some example code which I'm going to paste in here now um, and uh, uh, this was the solution that I gave uh, on how to <clears throat> properly sort of insert a new row into the table so uh, in the first row we're just uh, adding uh, we're requesting for a value there's our hidden txt hidden value we're going to set the value of that equal to what we asked for in the first row and uh, and then we just need to change a few things here so you can see I, I created a lookup table called name lookup and uh, so I'll change the name of that in our insert string and then I'll change the name of the field that we're going to fill in to first name because that's the name of the field in name lookup that we want to add to and then uh, our parameter there is correct because that comes from my form however we're going to change the name to my form instead of my form name so that it matches the, the name that I added. And then uh, we'll set the warnings off and just for this simple insert um, and then run our SQL, set the warnings back on again and then uh, use the uh, row source is equal to row source. So my CBO my combo dot row source is equal to uh, CBO my combo dot row source and that's uh, just like in the uh, video for cascading combo boxes that's a nice way of of refreshing our combo box then we can go ahead and test it and uh, so we'll put we'll go into our form view here and I'm going to double click on our field and you can see that a little pop-up says please enter a name and so I'll enter James because I want to put James into my into my drop-down list and uh, now you can see if I click on the drop-down list uh, James is there in the list and it's in because we're using a, <clears throat> a tabular form uh, it's going to be on every row so that's a nice way of doing it we could double click in a different row and we could add a different name uh, say Alice and uh, and click OK and that's going to also add it into our list so you can see if I uh, click on the drop down here uh, you'll see that Alice is in the list and we can choose Alice if we want and that's exactly what we want to see so we can add values as as much as we want to our uh, to our drop down list and uh, uh, however we do need to make sure that if somebody clicks cancel um, well you know what if they click cancel on the input box we don't want to add an empty uh, row into our into our combo box and so what we'll do is uh, we'll open our our uh, procedure again, just how we did the first time, and uh, that's our our input string right there. And uh, uh, what if what if we get a cancel on that? So we'll say if the length of the uh, input string is equal to zero, then <clears throat> exit sub, and that's just gonna do nothing if if they uh, click cancel, and uh, because cancel will return. Uh, an empty string and that's going to set us up for uh, handling those cases where people use the cancel button so if we uh, move on we can click on our form view and uh, that'll open our form uh, in regular sort of user view and uh, uh, now if we uh, don't put anything into our our uh, com or into our input box then uh, you can see there's no values that are added to the list. So now as you can see uh, we can add a value if we want to we can put a new name in and click OK and that's gonna add that to our list and if we put an empty value in then it, it'll skip adding that to the list it won't add it <clears throat> and we can add more records to our our tabular view just as as we would want to so we could say more data than before and we can use our new values in our combo list just as we uh, just as we expected so make sure you go and check out my video on cascading combo boxes uh, which is the video uh, that prompted this uh, question 
and because uh, it's a good video it'll it'll show you a lot more about how to use combo boxes in your project so next what I'll show is an alternate way of doing um, the same thing uh, which is a little bit simpler however it's not recommended for sort of uh, big production systems with lots of users but if you are just using the system yourself um, and you don't think that uh, uh, there's any security problem then you can you can bypass using the TXT uh, hidden value you don't have to use that and you can use uh, what's called dynamic SQL um, which is uh, a terrible thing that uh, lots of people love to hate. Um, however, in this case, if it's just a simple database for yourself, you can simplify the process um, <clears throat> by skipping the, the the TXT hidden value, and you can and simply concatenate uh, your SQL string to use the value. Uh, so you could say insert into name lookup first name, and then values, and then uh, concatenate a string together. Um, however, this, uh, this method will probably fail if you have any names with apostrophes in it, but it is one way that uh, people like to use uh, when they're in a hurry and they just want to, um, you know, slap together uh, a form for their own use. And so uh, you can see with those simple changes, I can minimize my, uh, my code window. And we can test it out by deleting our, our TXT hidden values so that um, there's no values being saved there. And uh, we can try this out in form view. So we'll go up and uh, try our form view. And uh, as you can see, uh, the form comes up just as it did before um, with the hidden field that is now missing. And I can double click on our, on our row there in the uh, combo box and I can add a new a name say William and click OK and if I look in the drop down box William is there um, and uh, note that uh, this method is called dynamic SQL which is not for production purposes the previous method that I showed you uses a parameter which is much more safe and that's how you add new rows to your combo boxes I hope you enjoyed today's episode on how to uh, add a new row into a uh, combo box using VBA. If you like what you saw today, please uh, like the uh, video and make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, click the bell if you see the bell and you'll be notified of uh, any new content that I put up on the channel. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.